Uh, hey guys, this is Joe with Above the Tree Line, uh, the company who does Edelweiss, and we're going to give uh, just one more minute. There's a couple more people settling in, and uh, then we'll get started. Thanks for your patience. All right, guys, uh, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, again, this, my name is Joe Foster, and I'm with Above the Tree Line. And today we're talking about Edelweiss Plus best practices. And um, just to kind of specify, this is um, really from the point of view of uh, retailers. So if you're a bookseller, especially for buyers, um, a lot of tips and tricks uh, for you. And uh, I, I do want to stress this, this is a repeat of our Winter Institute education session. So if you were at that one, you're going to see a, pretty much exactly the same sort of thing. Probably slightly different jokes, um, but only slightly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we are going to just kind of show you some stuff. Really, a lot of this stuff comes from, um, you know, when if we get support. Tickets, you know, people email support, which you can do, by the way, at support at above the tree line dot com. Um, and just like stuff that they've missed or, you know, little things that they've asked for that already exist and, and that sort of stuff. So that's kind of where we're coming from this uh, for this. Uh, these are the things we're going to be talking about today. Um, orders and kind of making sure that your order desk is nice and clean, um, clean and tidy is it's always easier to work in, in my experience. We're going to talk about some filters and setting up the new homepage so, you know, that the things that you want to see are, are the most visible. Um, some buzz and affiliation stuff and then using um, Edelweiss to communicate with your staff about upcoming titles, which I think is kind of a, an amazing thing that I've seen um, people do just you kind of do like almost a team buying sort of experience and it, it seems to work pretty well for a lot of, of stores and a little bit more about staying organized is kind of my soapbox um, I don't like a, a messy workspace and I see you know I go in to help people um, sometimes and I'm like oh my god what a mess <laughs> so to try to help you avoid that mess uh, and then a just a, a quick demo of how to buy um, backlist stuff and dumps and comps and that sort of stuff. Uh, and I do want to point out as well, if you are a new user, um, this is, we're obviously with this one, kind of assuming a kind of base familiarity with Edelweiss in general. Uh, we are doing next week, next Tuesday, we're doing um, another webinar uh, that's really like right from the get-go, the basics of um, how and why really to to do your ordering in Edelweiss, um, really basic step-by-step -step sort of stuff. And then uh, later on in March, mid-March, we're going to be doing uh, kind of a rollout of our new analytics tools. So all the, the tree line analytics stuff has always existed on a different website, and we're building that into Edelweiss Plus right now, and we're going to give a demo of that on March 19th. So um, stay tuned for that. And that's it for my slideshow. Um, yeah, so we're going to dive in and, and kind of show you around. I do want to um, point out that there is a, a questions or a Q&A tool um, on the webinar tools themselves where you can uh, ask questions. Uh, my colleague Darcy is on the other end ready to answer your questions. Um, we do have you guys muted. We are recording this so that uh, people can can view it at a later date. And also, sometimes webinars get a little funny when people are not muted and um, you know they're eating a bag of chips and yelling at their dog or something. So we're <laughs> avoiding that. Um, yeah. So that basically, this is the the Edelweiss homepage, and I'm going to jump right into the order stuff. So. Um, 
basically whenever you're working with orders, uh, there's just a couple of things that I always like to recommend that people keep in mind. Uh, the first thing would be uh, whenever you're creating an order, there's kind of a, a recommended protocol for naming your order, like something as simple as, as a name. Um, oftentimes I'll go in and someone's, you know, they have a whole bunch of orders that are just named like summer or something. And they're like, I can't find my Simon and Schuster summer 20,000, you know, 2017 order. Like, well, they're all named summer. So, <laughs> um, so I always like to recommend, you know, if it is a Simon and Schuster summer 2018 order, then you say you know, SNS summer 2018 and probably even go narrow that down to adult. And you're going to see me do a lot of typos. There's something about knowing that people are watching me typing that I just, I mess up all the time. So enjoy that. Um, but it's basically, you can see at a glance what this order is. It's you see who the publisher is, the season, the year. And then, um, you know, if, if they do, you know, like uh, random house will do blue, green kids, etc. cetera. Uh, it's just make all that really nice and clear. And if you have a code that you use, um, in your point of sale system and you like to use that, great. Um, don't really care what you use, to be honest, as long as you just make it easier on yourself. And that's that's what I personally do care about. <laughs> and then within the orders themselves, um, whenever you look in here, you can see active orders and completed orders. Um, essentially, active orders are orders that you can add titles to. Pretty simple. Um, once you're finished with an order, and this is really what this little section of the webinar is about is uh, you want to mark an order completed. So this, you know, Candlewick Fall 2017, um, that order can be marked completed. I'm finished with it. And so you just click completed and it goes away, but it doesn't, that doesn't delete it or anything. It just makes it go and live in the completed orders file here. So if you accidentally mark something completed, uh, you can come and find it back here in your completed orders and mark it active again, and it'll add it back to the active stuff. Uh, I have a, just a, a great example of, of the importance of this. Um, there was a store, a bigger store, who you know one of their buyers just constantly added new titles to old orders, and it was they were very frustrated by it, and I came in to, to give them some help and looked. They had like four or 500 open active orders and a lot of them were named Summer or something like that. So it was really, you know, when they're looking at a catalog, you know, you can look at your list of active orders. I'm gonna pop into one here. You can select your orders down at the bottom and when this was opened up, there'd be, you know, they'd have to scroll through for quite a while to, to get through all their orders. So really, really frustrating. Um, so I actually, I couldn't take it anymore. So I marked all their order, older orders completed and I haven't heard from them in like six months because of that. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. And if you do have a bunch of the of older orders listed in your active orders list, uh, you can come in here and check change this calendar to show all. And then you're going to see all active orders. And then you can, you know, scroll through and mark those older ones complete. You just kind of scroll to the bottom or you can change your sort. Like this one's from 2015. I don't need to see that anymore. 2014. I mean, Edelweiss has been around since 2009. So I've seen orders that are that old um, really for no reason. And um, now being done with an order is maybe different for each sort of retailer. So um, it could be after you've spoken with your sales rep, then you go ahead and mark it completed. And then you go into your completed orders and you download it to your point of sale system from there. Or perhaps it's something um, after you've actually imported it into your, <clears throat> excuse me, into your point of sale system, at that point you want to mark it completed. It's really up to you and how how you like to operate. Um, but this little note here is here because of um, I talked to a, a store yesterday, and this is just something this kind of a best practice that I've seen quite a few people do. You come into an order and click on edit, 
you can add comments. And so I added this imported into book log comment um, to use as an example. So you can kind of communicate with your staff. I know at the store that I used to work at, at um, Maria's bookshop, um, this is how I would communicate with the person who actually imported the orders. Um, I didn't have to do that, which is sometimes a prerogative of a buyer, I guess. Um, but I could say, you know, please import into book log. or something like that. <clears throat> and then that's an indicator for that person to uh, go ahead and do that work. All right. Um, so that's a bit about orders. Uh, now we're going to talk about doing some saved filters. That's one of the, the nice things, the most powerful things um, about Adolize Plus, the new platform here, is the ability to uh, create some pretty powerful new filters. Um, and I'm actually going to switch to a different view here. Um, so what we're going to do here, just kind of work as an example. Um, I'm going to show you how to create a save filter, and then going to do a quick exercise and show you kind of the power of, of what those filters can do. Uh, so to create a new filter, you come in here and click on Saved Filters. That'll take you to a new page where you're going to see all your available filters here. And you can also create a new one. So you click on Add New Filter. And so from here, you can add um, Adelweiss vendors are going to be those kind of umbrella publishers like Random House, as opposed to like Crown or Knopf, et cetera. Um, but you can add imprints, publication dates, uh, Bizac subjects. Um, and I want to show you, so if we click into fiction, for example, sorry for all the scrolling, um, if you click the down arrow here, then you can see those genres. If we scroll through, I'll go find mysteries, and then you can actually even find, you know, cozy mysteries. So if you want to have a filter for, you know, hardcover cozy mysteries coming out in the next week from Random House, you can totally set that filter up here. And to add a filter, you just click the plus. And then to add a, a different sort of filter, you can come in and say, you know, starting today, looking out in the next month. Um, so I can see down here, there are 33 um, results there. And then to use this filter, you simply name it and save it. And so it's something that you can come back to all the time. And I know, um, like at a, a bigger store, there's, you know, this one guy, he pretty much just buys philosophy and social science and history, he's that guy. Um, so he basically created a, the save filter for just his subjects. And those are the only books he even wants to see. So he adds that filter in and sets it. And when he's looking through catalogs and stuff, that's all he sees. Um, so it just kind of speeds up the buying process for him. And again, he has a very, very focused list that he buys. Um, I'm going to say, cozy he out in a month? And save. And so then you'll uh, you'll see this pop up. I don't know why this keeps popping up. Don't see it. Uh, so what we're doing for this exercise is I want to look at titles that are out in a week. And I want to point out too, once you you can click on here and then you can click to edit a filter as well, so if you want to change things. What's nice about these, this particular sort of publication date filter, I will click in there, is that um, you can see, the, basically you can set a, a dynamic time frame. So, you know, out in one week uh, is something that's going to update every single day, um, especially on Tuesdays, because that's how publishing works. Um, but it's just kind of a nice, easy way to get a kind of a constantly updated list of, of those new titles. So what we're going to do here is actually, uh, once this fills out, I'm going to refine this list by titles that I have ordered. So if you scroll down, you're going to see a bunch of different ways to refine this list. So we've created a filter, now we're going to filter the filter, essentially. But I'm going to click on Ordered. So out of this rather large list of 2,400 titles. There's 151 uh, that the store has on order. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and sort this by order quantity. And there's this little guy here. So this is a ascending or descending toggle switch, essentially. So when you switch that, it's going to put all the big stuff up on top. And so those titles that you have um, the most on order will be right at the top. And then what I've seen a lot of stores do is then, you know, take this list and come into other actions, click select all, and then create PDF. And they basically create a list of titles to give to their staff or even their customers. Say, hey, the heads up, these are the ones that were, that are coming out next week. Or even better, because that 151 titles is kind of a lot. And you'll go through the top 10 and create a PDF of that. Or you could email that to your staff and, and that sort of stuff. And it's all right there in other actions. So kind of a fun exercise. I, I have my own personal um, save filters that I that I like. You know, I, I read a lot of epic fantasy. And so I have an epic fantasy save filter that I can check out all the time. Uh, I want to point out as well that so this is kind of a segue into the next section, which is about uh, setting your home page up. Uh, you can create a widget specifically for those uh, save filters as well. So that's kind of the idea behind the new home page here is that you can really make it look however you want to look. Um, there's a the little add widget thing here. And from here, I can say, show me notifications or you know, my bookmarked catalogs or just catalogs that have been shared with me. So that's going to be um, sales rep markups. And then review copies, I can say, just show me the ones I can download right this minute or my open requests, et cetera. Different publisher lists, say filters, your tags, your active orders, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff in here that you can kind of pick and choose from. And then basically you just grab here and you can drag them around however you like and, and put them you know, wherever makes the most sense to you. And then if you like, you know, like in the notifications thing here, you can click to see more. That'll expand this out so you can see you know, I have shared markups from these various people, uh, shared event grids, etc. Now some of these are older, you know, I can come in and click on this little check mark and that'll mark it as red so it'll clean up my list that way so in the interest of the theme of keeping your workspace clean you can clean up your notifications as well uh, you can see so like with the available digital review copies here i have a fantasy sci-fi filter on there so basically these are fantasy or sci-fi titles that i can just read right now this is how that plays out. So uh, to add a filter, you just click on here. And it'll allow you to either clear out or add your various save filters. And you can do that um, kind of all over the site here. You know, I can say, um, you know, of my friend reviews, only show me the literary fiction ones, for example. Um, one thing that I've, I've heard from some of the more serious buyers out there is that they don't want to see all the Facebook crap. I just did air quotes. <laughs> um, and you'd absolutely like, you don't have to look at your friend reviews. You don't have to have friends in here or anything like that. Um, but you can come in and click on the tools up here at the top and you can go ahead and hide different elements. So if you just are not interested in using shelves or you don't use tags, you hate people, <laughs> um, you can make all that stuff disappear. You don't even like review copies. So that's going to update your page and remove those elements from the top navigation here. And then you would just, you know, I've added these widgets in, but you can go ahead and just remove those as well. So nice and easy. I am going to add those things back in because I happen to like them. And uh, you can add these in, in different orders and, and that sort of thing as well. So 
yeah, so lots of customiz customization there. Um, the idea really is that you're going to be able to just see the stuff that you want to see, not see the stuff you don't want to see, and kind of make it nice and easy for you to find the stuff that you need to find. So the next section is about um, using the buzz and affiliation stuff. So one of the cool things about Edelweiss is that this is where kind of the, the publishing world works a lot of their days, uh, whether it's publishers or retailers or librarians or reviewers, There's just a lot of people on here all the time. Um, and because of that, publishers like to offer you know, the digital review copies um, just because they want people to read their books, especially you guys who you know, kind of have a hand in making a lot of sales for a book. I mean, it all just kind of makes sense. Um, and because of that as well, um, you can obviously submit reviews for a book. So own the day, own your life book. If you think that's pretty awesome, you can come in here and click on this little icon to get to the reviews. You say that's a solid 10 and you can actually write a review. You don't have to by any stretch. You can just rate it if you like and you can rate different elements of it if you want to. Um, but then from here as well, you can submit to the publisher and you can also submit to Indie Next and SEBA, uh, the Southern um, Independent Booksellers Association basically requested that we allow people to submit reviews to them as well. Um, the different um, regionals are, are starting to ask the same thing as well. So you may, may see more of those coming. But basically, this is where you nominate titles for Indie Next is kind of what I'm getting at. And you, of course, you know, Indie Next, they love if you write a review, um, a little blurb, you don't have to. If you do this, just make it blank and click save, then that's going to essentially be a vote for that title for the inclusion in the Indie Next list. Um, nice, easy way to um, nominate titles. I do want to point out there's also this little much love thing, which is kind of a, you know, flyby sort of review. Once you click the that heart, it's going to automatically give this title a rating of nine. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, that does not actually submit it to Indie Next, though. So we're not going to make that assumption on your behalf. So if you do want to do the Indie Next submission, you just want to do this. Click Save, and it's nominated, just like so. Now, there's also shelves in here. So if you want to add a title to, this is how a lot of people track their reading, I'm anticipating, highly anticipating, finished, etc. cetera. Um, but all that activity kind of gets aggregated into the buzz area here. And the buzz is based on your uh, list of friends, your affiliations, which we'll get into in just a second, um, or your account. So my account activity is actually going to be your coworkers. So if you, you know, have your staff on Edelweiss and they're reviewing titles and stuff like that, this is where you can actually go and see like what they're talking the most about. And you can sort this list how you like. So you can see those titles that are getting the most buzz will, will be towards the top here. Look into friends. Oh, this book was great, by the way. Then you'll see the community involvement sort of stuff here, the shelves, those much loves, again, the kind of drive-by reviews and then those community reviews, you can actually click in and see the sorts of things that your colleagues are saying about titles. So it can be really useful, um, kind of a nice way to catch that pre-publication buzz, which is kind of hard to grab sometimes, you know, before titles are even out, they're getting, there's a lot of excitement built up. Uh, but you can do a few things here. If I click into, if you click on your name at the top of any page, you're going to see affiliations here and you can edit those and this is where if you are an ABA member you can come in here and click on the plus and then add your ABA member ID um, and if that matches with a number that 
is in a feed that the ABA has given to us, um, then you'll be automatically connected to other ABA members, which can be pretty cool. Um, it's kind of a nice way to see those uh, titles that your bookselling colleagues are excited about and are talking about. Uh, conversely as well, you can add yourself to the Edelweiss community. So this is an, an opt-in sort of thing, um, but this is gonna be, you know, there are a lot of people that are opted in there, but essentially this is gonna be you know, booksellers and reviewers and librarians and bloggers. And to be totally honest, if you want to see what's hot in um, YA urban fantasy, for example, like click into that because those people are very, 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 very excited about those books. It's a, it's more like a lifestyle than a hobby, really. Um, but kind of a, a nice clue into what, you know, you may not be into that sort of book um, but there's a whole lot of people who are and you can kind of get an idea of uh, which ones to pay attention to it can be really powerful and then to uh, make friends for example um, it's you can have more of a, a targeted view of what people whose opinions you you respect um, are, are reading and reviewing the friend search is here uh, like I can see, I don't know if Darcy and I are friends or not. Yeah. So I'm going to send Darcy a friend invite. So it's that easy. So she's going to get an email uh, that I've, I want to be her buddy. And then um, when she accepts or declines, um, if she accepts, I'll be able to see uh, her review and, and shelf activity and that sort of stuff. So kind of a cool way to connect with people that maybe you meet at trade shows or, or that sort of thing, kind of a cool networking thing. And speaking of networking within your, within your um, cohorts, your, with your staff, um, segue into the next section. Um, again, one of the things that I find most powerful is the idea of kind of sharing the, the buying burden in a way like not to say that like you should have 13 different buyers or something like that that's kind of crazy but getting input from your staff I think is a really powerful thing um, something that I think maybe I didn't do as well as I should have when I was a buyer um, kind of solicit that feedback uh, just knowing what's available and, and what's possible nowadays um, click into a new a new clean fresh catalog here um, but essentially you can have your staff you know if they're reading and reviewing and and are excited about books which hopefully your staff is excited about upcoming books um, you can have them basically write notes and tags and, and that sort of thing on here um, this book is beautiful. I kind of get weepy every time I read it with my daughter. Um, so, you know, you should totally check it out if you haven't. But uh, tags and notes are really, really powerful. So you can see that this particular book um, has a co-op tag and then a little detail about that. So basically, um, somebody went in and um, added a tag. So this is a co-op title, and then they gave a little detail about what that is. But your tags can be literally anything. It's just a keyword that you um, type in. So it can be whatever you want. That's one that I've used before. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you type a word and hit enter. What that does is it creates a list. There's a little tags tab up here, which we can look at in a minute. Um, but it's a way for you to create a list of titles, like kind of on the fly, or something that you and your team can use. Uh, like co-op. So if you have, you know, there's the buyer and the co-op person, or if you're both of those, that's great. You can tag stuff as co-op and then go in later on and look at all your co-op titles and then do whatever work you need to do on those. Um, one thing I did do a lot when I was a buyer was um, just type in a bookseller's name. There's a, a guy named Clint who worked at the bookshop who's a great hand seller for specific titles, um, not for everything, um, but, you know, like history, he's an astronaut, and space fanatic, just really great at, at selling those books. So if I came across one of those books, then I would 
mark Clint's name and he would come in and look, you know, click into that tag and see books that I thought that he might be interested in. And he often was, <laughs> it worked out really well. Or I actually, um, you know, I had a customer uh, who, this guy named Don, he was awesome. Best red guy I've ever come across. Um, but he was a, kind of obsessed with the idea of cannibalism. He was an archaeologist and stuff. So anytime I came across a book about cannibalism, so it's not a ton, but the, every one, now and then they would come up. Um, I would mark it Don, and then I would go through and like remember that I had I had marked a couple of titles for him, and then I would actually come in and it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to email this to Don and say, hey, do you want this? And he would invariably say yes, and there's a sale. Pretty easy. Um, that being said. Uh, you're, what I always recommend to folks is that you have a meeting with your staff about what this is going to look like. So if, you know, there's one person who comes in and just tags, you know, like ridiculous things and everything, like, you know, I'd eat glass for this one or something. That just popped into my head for some reason, sorry. <laughs> or they're just like adding all kinds of stuff. And that kind of muddies the waters a lot, right? Like it's not, they it might be amusing, um, and that's that's has its place as well. But if you know, oftentimes it's saying you know use your tags to say, you know, Joe wants a copy, or you know whatever sort of protocol you set up. Um, and one thing, and, and you always you want to make sure that if you're using a tag like co-op, then the people who are using that tag use it the same. So if one person says co-op with a dash and someone else says coop then you have two tags and it kind of becomes useless frankly um, so again talk to your staff about how that should look and think about how you like to communicate and one thing that i always liked to say um, you know if you are going to for example so you can write a tag you can also write a note so a note is basically a <clears throat> um, just provide uh, ability to help you provide more information uh, so, for example, I would say note or Joe note as a tag and then come in to the notes field or you can click here and say <clears throat> Joe read this, loved it. Again, I can't type in everybody's why everybody close your eyes. <laughs> well, sell it hard. And I always like to recommend that people sign their notes as well. So as a buyer, if I'm going through here and I see a note that says one of my good hand sellers is excited about a book saying, hey, please buy a bunch of these. I'm going to up this order a bit um, just to kind of like try to make some more cash on that book, frankly. Um, so that that's kind of where that, that communication with your staff can really come in. Uh, you can also, when, if your staff is... Um, written a review of a title, you know, if, if you really encourage your staff to nominate titles for Indie Next and that sort of thing, uh, you can change this widget to show reviews, say my colleague review. So this is going to be just my staff. Um, that's just the one that I just did. Uh, but th that's a great way for you to see those titles that your staff has been reviewing and nominating for Indie Next and that sort of stuff. Um, one thing that, I, that I've seen booksellers do to kind of increase participation amongst your staff there, just as a side note, is um, you know if the ABA selects one of your staff's reviews as to blurb, like in the in that Indie Next newsletter, then that staff member gets a bottle of wine or a sandwich or something. And I'll tell you, like you dangle free food or booze in front of a bookseller and see what happens. Um, but tends to really, really increase that participation. So it's kind of a, a fun idea there. I'm going to change this to friends. <clears throat> uh, so the next thing we're going to talk about is um, just kind of like in general kind of staying organized. And this is going to be especially from the buyer perspective. So like the one hard truth of being a buyer is that the books just never stop coming and the markups never stop coming and there's a lot of them. Um, so I always recommend, you know, if you get that, that markup email 
and <clears throat> you you know you click through it you go you go to the catalog here there's a couple things i would like i always recommend that people do like you know that this is one that you're going to work on it's one of the big publishers their summer list come in here and you can add it to your work list and what that does is essentially sets this title aside not that title i'm sorry you're um it sets that catalog aside onto a work list. So a work list is the, another widget that you can create here. Um, so basically what this can be is a list of the stuff that you're gonna work on right now. So, you know, I know that I'm gonna work on this Simon & Schuster summer 2018, so I can just find, it's just right there, right at the top of my, of my list here. Um, the summer 2017 one, I should have taken that off my work list a while ago. Go. So I'm going to click in there, and to remove it from the work list, you just click that star again. So that takes it off, so that's no longer going to show up on that list. So basically, you add stuff to the work list, you do the work, and then you remove it from the work list. So it's just a constant reminder of all the work you have to do. But another thing that you can do is actually create a folder for a particular set of catalogs. Uh, the best example, I, I think, is if um, you, know, you have one of those commission reps who reps like 15 different publishers. You can, you know, whenever you get that markup email or you, you see that they're, they've shared a markup with you, uh, you can come in and click folder. And the folder is essentially just like a tag, really. So I can say um, Seth rep summer 2018, for example. And like all my catalogs that I got from Seth, I'm going to add to this one folder here. And then that is yet another little widget that you can set up on your home page. And I'll show you where else to find it as well. So you can come in, add widgets, catalogs, and your folders. You can see all the different folders that have been set up here. There's my Seth one. Um, but you can also find your folders if you click into catalogs. You're going to see your folders down here, if you like. And you you can also find those um, you know, markups that have been shared with you and whatnot can be listed right here as well. So you can either set up the widget or you can go to your, your catalogs page and find those. Just a nice way to, again, to stay organized. Um, I do think, again, like it, with the idea of having a clean workspace, it can be kind of tough to just keep track of all those different catalogs from all those different reps and all the different publishers. Um, I mean, you know, one, one big publisher can throw six catalogs a season at you. Uh, and so you just kind of, you can throw all those into one folder and then find them nice and easy. Another thing while you're in a catalog, oop, yikes, sorry. <clears throat> One of my things just decided to restart itself, sorry. Uh, so while you're within a catalog uh, working on an order, I'm just going to grab a random one here. Um, chances are you're not going to go through all 374 titles all in one fell swoop. That's kind of hard to do. Maybe you're that lucky and you have that much uninterrupted work time. But for example, if you're you know at title 152 and it's time to go home or you know your kid needs to have dinner or something uh, you can come in and click on this little more icon here and you just bookmark this so that's going to close you out of the catalog uh, the next time you go into that catalog you're just going to pop right into um, title 152 you'll see the you have your bookmarked catalogs here So it's just a, a nice way that, you know, it, instead of having like a post-it with a catalog and 
and title number uh, sitting on the side of your computer, you can just bookmark the catalog itself. And one last thing with the organized stuff, I'm going to show you event grids real quick, just uh, something that people tend to miss. Um, one of the most asked for features with the event grids when we you know, built in the new stuff here was just the ability for people to archive their old grids. Pretty simple. Um, for example, if you've you know, you've looked at this particular event grid, there's you've either done your request or um, you're not going to request anything out of it. You can come over here and click this little filing cabinet icon here, and that will archive it, which takes it out of the open and puts it in the archive. So basically, again, you can have a nice clean workspace here. And, um, you know, those grids that are, you know, this one is was due back in October, can't really do any requests there. You see the submit button is even gone. Uh, so just go ahead and archive those. This is something if you obviously if you keep up on it and um, just archive stuff on a regular basis, then it's going to be nice and clean and you're going to always see your most recent stuff and be ready to go there. All right, so last thing I want to show you guys today is the um, really easy ability to buy related titles and comparable titles and um, com uh, dumps and, and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to show you, this is a great catalog for dumps. Penguin does a lot of those. Uh, by dumps, I mean displays, uh, for example, if you aren't familiar with the term. So like this uh, eight copy floor display of love, oh, signed copies, which is cool. Um, you're going to see related here. If the publisher does it correctly, and most of them have been, um, you can click into related, and you're going to see that the actual title is the is the related um, title here. So usually what will happen, like with the dump, is that you'll buy the dump, and then you can come in afterwards, you know, after you've worked with your sales rep and that sort of stuff, you can come in like you've had, we'll just say one of those. Um, you submitted this to your rep, they've processed it on their end and you're about to add this into your um, point of sale system. I would just come in here, click on that, click on orders, say this is the one I'm doing, I'm do eight copies because that's how many are coming in the um, display there. And then I would just delete that because you don't really necessarily want to, you're not going to be selling the floor display uh, so you don't necessarily need that in your point of sale system. You do do need the uh, actual title in there, but it's that easy. So you know, if we're talking comparable titles, for example, you can go ahead and um, just kind of buy. So really, what the idea here, sorry, is that you're going to you know see backlist titles in the comparable title list and um, go ahead and order those if, if there's something that you're missing. Sorry, these images are getting me funky here. So this How to Catch a Star, I can go in, click on that guy. See a little bit more about the title, the contributor bio. You're going to see a lot of different things here depending on, on the title. So if there's um, markups from the sales rep, um, for this particular title, that'll, that'll show up in here as well. This is an older title, so that's um, not the case here, but I can click into orders. And if I wanna order a copy of this for each of my stores here, this is a, a two-store organization, um, easy peasy. And then just close out and you know rinse and repeat. If there's any more of those you wanna buy, you can click into those, or if not, you just move on to the next title. Um, so really easy. I know that in the older Edelweiss, it was um, it could be kind of a pain, and you sometimes get pushed out of the the catalog that you were in. You have to go back and find your place, and kind of a pain. So nice and easy nowadays. Um, so definitely a good way to keep track of those comparable titles and make sure that you have a new you know the backlist um, titles for a, a new big book.
but that is it for today, you guys. Um, kind of nice and easy little tour. Oh, sorry, I had to tell you I was going to show you tags. Um, you can find all your tags here in the tags list and see your tags and the tags from your colleagues here as well. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to show you that earlier. Um, but that said, um, again, if you guys do have questions, uh, definitely let us know. The very best way to um, get your questions answered is to email us at support at above the tree line .com. And we do have a bunch of people standing by. Oops, we have a support team. So um, we always try to get answers to you quickly. Uh, and then also, if you click on help, you can cl also click on get help which always kind of cracks me up to be honest. Um, but you can click into booksellers and just see a whole bunch of help documents that kind of walks through all the stuff, um, how to do orders and all the little nuances of that and you know exporting to your point of sale system and um, that sort of thing. Uh, how to do the event grids and you know, how to get access to the grids and that sort of thing. So lots and lots of stuff in there. Um, and we also are, you know, obviously we have the newsletter that you, if you have a, AWS account, then you get the newsletter. Um, but that is getting an upgrade right this minute. Uh, so next week, the usual newsletter is going to look different, and then you guys are going to get start getting a, a monthly newsletter with much, much more targeted tips and tricks and lots of good info and new features and uh, that sort of stuff for you. But yeah, uh, again, thank you guys so much for joining in today, and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.